Yeah. This is our first real. Yeah, Brian, I just wanted to say hi and uh, thank you hi, for Dan. coming. Good to see you. Nice to see you too. Hi, Glenn. Hello. What's it's, your last name again? Uh, McHugh. McHugh. Is, uh, so I'm Brian McHugh, uh, spelled M C H U G H. Hi. Uh, from, I'm the Community Development Director at Franklin County Housing and Redevelopment Authority, F C R H R A, the easiest way to put it down. <laughs> Um, and I'm here to um, talk about um, the possibility possibility of including Wendell in a, a community development block grant application that's due in March. Um, you have been involved with, um, I think, 17 different uh, block grants over the years. Well, not 17, maybe I just had it written down somewhere here. Um, Quite a few. More than that. that. What's that? Quite a few, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. And mostly uh, you've been um, um, participating in the housing rehab program in, through those years. There were a few things that, we, uh, that were done, um, I believe at the town hall, some uh, the accessible bathrooms at town hall, I believe at one time, and some dry hydrants down, I think, on Morse Village Road or something. I'm not really sure where that came from. This is back in the 90s. Um, but I just want to give a little overview of the community, develop, community development block grant program. It was a a program established in 1974. It's a federally funded program. Uh, the money goes through the, the U.S. Department of Housing and, and Urban Development, and then it gets doled out to the states, and the states um, uh, either directly fund certain towns that, um, that are considered what they call mini entitlements, or they have a, a competitive application round, um, which is much of many of the small towns have to participate in. So we've been writing grants since the early 80s for all, most of the Franklin County towns. Um, we've been uh, pretty successful at it. Um, there are, the CDBG program is an umbrella program, I call it, where there's a lot of different activities that are eligible under it. There's five different categories. There's housing assistance, which includes like, like a housing rehab program. There's public facilities, uh, which can um, include neighborhood playgrounds, senior centers, um, infrastructure projects, usually uh, water and sewer projects, uh, social service um, programs, and planning projects. Um, I wanted to talk about um, the housing rehab program specifically tonight, um, but I, if there are other people that would that want to bring any projects forward that may be eligible um, for the program, I'd certainly want to talk about it. There are three national objectives uh, that you have to meet in order to qualify for a community development block grant. Um, you have to meet one of them. Um, either the program um, or the project has to benefit uh, low to moderate income uh, residents. Uh, it has to eliminate or it has to eliminate slum and blight, or it can um, uh, be for an urgent need um, if there's like a catastrophic event in town. Um, you can use CDBG funds as last resort funding. Uh, I've been there for 32 years, and we've only did it, done it once, and that was when uh, Tropical Storm Irene came through, and we did a, a road project out in Ash, Ashfield. But generally, you're looking at benefiting low to moderate income residents or um, uh, eliminating slum and blight. Slum and blight is, um, you have to have a designated area as slum and blighted in order to do projects in that area. Um, there's a process for that. Typically, you don't see it in smaller towns. It's usually in you know, Miller's Falls had a designation of slum and blight at one time. Turner's Falls did. So you're, you're looking at, you know, that, that makes it eligible for certain projects in that. So typically you're looking at housing programs or infrastructure programs or public facility programs uh, or projects, I should say. Um, so with that, I'd like to, you know, if you, uh, I forgot your name, what was Chris it? Queen. Chris Queen, okay. Um, if you wanted to, Chris came to talk about a possible Product that may may be included in the application, and we'll um, we'll see if it's eligible. And I might not give you a hard answer tonight, but uh, I would certainly look into it. So go ahead. Mm, thank you, Brian. So um, I was just basing uh, my understanding of this on the brief description that Glenn sent out, and it seemed that under the um, uh, you know, facility, public facility, or senior center. Uh, social service programs, et cetera, that we might fit under such a thing. Um, we are a private entity, we're not a town building, but the, the meeting house is hoping this year 
primarily through application to the Massachusetts Cultural Facilities Fund grant program, which is a matching program to receive funding for an addition to the meeting house, which would have bathrooms and a small kitchen. And while there is a fantastic new industrial scale kitchen uh, in the town hall, when it's across the common from where we are, and in order to offer a range of social events, um, cultural events, uh, concerts, meeting space for intergenerational groups, so on, we need to have some kind of place to heat or warm food, but particularly we need uh, handicap accessible bathrooms, which the meeting house has never had, had a, a privy on site, but <laughs> I think we've moved beyond that. So the, um, I brought a handout which shows a drawing of what it might look like. It would go uh, from the south uh, east corner of the building uh, uh, in the eastward direction. It would stop short of Brian Anderson's uh, thing, 25 setback would be respected. Um, the appearance of it, I think, would pass Mass Historic's standards that it would look very nice with respect to the 1846 building. Um, but it would make the building really available for the community to use in a variety of, of uses. Now, I don't know how the rest of these programs fit under the low moderate income, but I think clearly Wendell is a town that has low and moderate income individuals. Um, and so when the select board, when the town um, sold us the property uh, two years ago, um, it was with the understanding that we would use it as a community resource. And that has been our intention all along. And without the bathrooms and the kitchen, we're quite limited in what we can do. We can have, uh, we invite people in on old home day and we can have a circle dance, which we're planning to do on the solstice. But we have a porta potty on the front lawn, lawn at the moment and we'd like to get beyond that. I did bring the drawing that Bob Lee did for us of how this would look uh, both an elevation and a floor plan for anybody who wanted to take a look at it. But I guess the main question is whether or not we as a private entity would fit within the guidelines of the block grant program. Right. So it's possible. Typically when it's a public facility means it's owned by the town. Um, and there, were, there are restrictions on what we can do at town buildings. Um, when it's the, it's, if it's a town hall, you can only do accessibility improvements. Um, with a community center, which are eligible, they're eligible um, to be, you can build a whole new community center um, or renovate one or create one. Um, I'm just wondering, is this, is this now the community center? Or is it, what's the, no, it's not, okay. What Wendell has is a senior center, which is occasionally used, which is used as community center has, mm -hmm. um, I think 850 square feet. Dan is, our senior center is a very small building, yeah. a lovely little building, mm -hmm. but for larger gatherings, um, including memorials, weddings, ceremonial types of things, um, there is no place. The town hall is used as uh, mm -hmm. for concert space yeah. and for craft fairs and for food distribution programs on Sundays and so on. So we do have a building of similar size, which is the town building. Mm -hmm. And I think it's reached its possibly its optimal, um, it has bathrooms and a, and a mm -hmm. kitchen. So we're duplicating that. But our facility is, uh, it looks very different. It's quite charming at this point. We spent two years with fixing and it up. So that's right. the old town hall, right? The old town hall. Yeah, I used yeah. to be the Baptist church. Ours used to be the yeah. congregational okay. church. I think we were going to full moon coffee house. That's it. There. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. so it's about the same size, actually. Um, so ours is renovated and uh, will be, I think, a place people will want to um, gather and celebrate and so on. Okay, so I, I'm going to look into this. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's probably not going to be something that's eligible I think, mm -hmm. because it's okay. not designated as a community center right now, you know. Right. Um, and, you know, just getting, just touching on the, the low to moderate income benefit. Yeah. Wendell, so any, any of these programs or, or projects, um, aside from a housing rehab project, there's, there's, there's the, the clientele the beneficiaries have to be, there's, there's what's called limited clientele, there's direct benefit. Um, direct benefit is when you're doing a housing rehab program and you, you qualify that household as being low to moderate income. You might have a, a project you know, that's at a 
community center, you know, um, that is, you know, and the town has to have over 51% low to moderate income residents. Wendell does. So it's a town-wide benefit. Whereas with a lot of towns we're dealing with them, they're under 51%. We have to do income surveys for certain portions of town or take census blocks or whatever. So they're eligible for some of these sort of things just by, by the fact that there's, I can't remember what the number is, but I know that it's over 51% because there's only like 10 towns that are in three of them are in Franklin County, you know. Uh, through the state so mm. um so uh and again you know accessibility um projects we can do you know not just at, at, at the town hall we can get you in the door at other 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 buildings you can do other stuff that's not it's not that the, your the place where you you conduct your government business basically which is the town hall um so at transfer station you might do something like an accessibility project like that that sort of thing um, but I will, I will certainly look into it if I can have some, um, sure. I'll take one of these yeah. and I don't know how far Bob is with this because, uh, you know, with, with public facility projects, you, in order to put an application in, you have to have bid ready plans and specs basically. Right. Yeah. We're not there yet. Okay. We've started talking with Renaissance builders who knows the building quite well because mm -hmm. they helped do a workup for us seven years ago with, um, uh, Jones Witsit Architects. So they've been over the building thoroughly and yeah. they said that it was ready to be rehabilitated. The first thing we did was to put an ADA compliant ramp on the back. So uh -huh. the building is accessible. Yeah. Uh, so it's main impediment right now is no bathrooms. Right. Or kitchen. right. Um, the other thing I would say is that among the domains of activity that we have been working on um, is a, a living room concept in which in addition to uh, theater style seating and tables for maker learner activities and so on. We're planning to have an area at one end, which is set up like a living room. And so it would be a community center where people could come mm -hmm. and socialize um, daily, uh, perhaps. Um, we are working with Village Neighbors, which is a four town consortium mm -hmm. uh, serving uh, elders. Mm -hmm. And uh, it may be that with funding for busing and so on, the Wendell Meeting House could be a place where New Salem and Chewsbury and Mugrib could also come bring elders to enjoy uh, mm -hmm. social interactions and so on. Right. So, well, um, it's very intriguing to me, and I'd like to sort of think outside the box of some of these things. I hate to say it because a lot of times, a lot of times when you know CVG programs sound like, oh, this, you can do all these things, and then <laughs> it's like, and then you get down, down to it, it's like, well, you got to fit it in this, you know, this conduit. So. Um, I appreciate you coming forward with it, and I certainly will, will be in touch. Um, do you have any contact information? That I yeah, have? I didn't, but I'll give it to you. Is it, is it Queen? Just oh, yeah, Chris you, Queen, yeah. yeah. CS Queen at Outlook.com. CS Queen at Outlook.com. I have a list. 978. 544. Do you? 0216. 0216. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate it. All right. I'll just keep it. Oh, thanks. This is our um, this was our fundraiser mailer behind that, which I just reprinted on my printer. The color went completely so uh, doesn't look like a bright blue look. It looks like Hades or something. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, so yeah, I'll certainly look into that. Um, the... Brian, I did have one question for you. Okay. Um, which is, can you just give us a brief recap on our last grant? and sure. uh how it was spent how it went sure. yep uh we exceeded the the goal we we rehabbed um 17 units in wendell uh for a total of five hundred and thirty five thousand dollars. so um that was you were with shootsbury shootsbury didn't do didn't do as much we were able to sort of reallocate some of the money from shootsbury back into wendell uh, i think it was we were, the goal was 10 units in wendell and we were able to do 17 years. Um, but the reason I wouldn't normally come back to a town this soon, honestly, um, but we have 11 more people that are on the waiting list right now. Um, and uh, we only have about $28,000 in what we consider program in income, which is we have an, an agreement with the town of Wendell to when these loans get paid back to put it into a revolving loan fund and reloan that money out. Um, right. When we get to a certain point, what we had to do with the 2019 program was to take that money, put it into the grant, spend that money first, because the state wants to see you spend that down, 
we're always arguing it's nice to have for a rainy day, you know, when you don't have a program going, but they want to get rid of it. And so they, so we spent that down, but we have had a payoff in the meantime. So there's $28,000 there. We've evaluated who's on the wait list right now. There aren't any, emerg there aren't any emergency situations. But typically when you get under $50,000 in the coffers, we look at, we sort of reserve it for those cases where someone has a leaking roof or they lose their heat or the septic system fails or something like that, or they need a well. So we're, we're you know, we've, we have that sitting there that we'll, we'll have to go into the grant um, if it gets awarded. And we'll, 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 we'll factor that into when we sort of nail down how many units we might want to go for in Wendell. There's a drop off. Um, if you have 11 people right now. We were contacting people that are, that have been on the wait list, you know, maybe four or five years ago that didn't go through to sort of build up, you know, and see, and see what kind of need there is. But once that, you know, you, we, you might have 15 people on a waiting list, but we wouldn't necessarily go over 15 units because it's usually, there's a, you know, about a 25, 30% drop off from people who either they move away or they're not eligible anymore because they're making more money or they get the things done, they get the things fixed they want to fix and they're not, they don't need the program anymore or they just don't get their applications in. There's a lot of, that happens a lot too. Um, so we, we are thinking that, um, so does that answer your question, Dan? Does that? Yes, it, yeah, it does, Brian. Thank you very much. We really appreciate yeah. it. Okay, thank you. Um, so we're looking to, usually, you know, um, smaller towns are in a regional application, um, not, not a standalone application. So you've always been with some other towns. It's just sort of an economy of scale for us running the program, um, but it also allows us to sort of, after a certain period of time, we can the money can switch over to other towns. So like what happened in the last time when Shutesburg didn't have as many people as we had hoped, we were able to reallocate that money into, into Wendell. So right now we're looking at um, maybe doing a program with Charlemont. I know they're way out there, you know, um, but they have a need out there and possibly Buckland. And we're looking at some of the other wait lists that we have going that we might want to um, beef up a little bit or at least inquire in those in those towns. But it would probably it would be at the very minimum two two towns, um, possibly three towns uh, as a regional application. Um, so I'm look, I'm hoping that you know it, you know I could talk about the program a little bit more if you want. Uh, I don't know if any of you are familiar with our program at all. Um, but if anybody, uh, hi there. Um, it's it's a it's a program designed to benefit low and moderate income households uh, to get um, uh, to correct code violations at their houses, anything from septic wells electrical plumbing, building um, code violations, sanitary code violations, and then um, energy efficient upgrades. So we do, you know, the, the, the appliances that are put in, whether they're boilers, hot water heaters, are all energy star rated appliances. We do insulation. Um, we do work with Community Action who runs a weatherization and assistance program. Um, if people are eligible for that program, we're tied into them. We have a referral system that we put them, we get them in that program. If they're their income is lower than the income that we, we have, but if they qualify for that program, then we so we, with them so that they can get that work done for nothing. The program is a, it's a loan program. Um, so people, it's a 0% deferred payment loan that people can get. It can get up to $50,000 in, in a household. Um, and there's, two, there's two categories. There's a $40,000 cap and a $50,000 cap. The $50,000 cap is if you have things like lead paint or septic uh, or well or asbestos um, and historic preservation. Those are the things that sort of you, you can tap, you can go up to $50,000. Otherwise, you, get, you can get up to $40,000. It's a, um, again, it's a, a loan um, that's at 0%. It gets recorded against your property. You do not make payments on it. It gets paid back when the house transfers ownership. But the that the principal um, gets forgiven over the course of 15 years. So after 15 years, if you stay there, you don't owe anything. Um, and it gets prorated every year. So at the, it gets reduced at 115 for 15 years. So if someone sells in 10 years, we'll do a calculation and say what the, the payback is. Um, so that, that's a new thing. That's the 2019 program had that, um, that arranged or th those loan terms. Some of the older ones, that are out there are 100% payback whenever you sell or transfer. Uh, right now, Wendell has uh, 1.9 million dollars in outstanding loans over the years that we've we've given you know we've run the program. So 
that money will eventually come back. Some of those are, are ones that are reduced, you know, have a declining balance. So it isn't, it's, it's going to be a little bit of a moving target, but the majority of them of them originated before that, before the new loan terms came out. So, so that money will, will get recycled in the revolving loan fund. Um, I will contact you, Glenn, this, the, your, um, the uh, contract we have with the town, I think ran, it was a 10 year contract and it's gonna be up sometime in 2023. So that's coming up. So um, we have an idea, we wanna extend it just one year because there may be a different way of running the program that might be, it, it'll, it'll be, <laughs> we won't be sort of, uh, uh, beholden to some sort of regulate some regulations if we if we sort of reclassify the program. I, I won't get into that right now. I'll talk to you about that at a different time. Um, but uh, anyway, so so that you know what we do is you know, once we people apply for the program and qualify them, then we if the house is built before 1978, we have to send a lead inspector out to do a lead evaluation, regardless of how many if there's children there or not. We have to do a certain level of lead remediation because it's HUD money and there's a HUD lead safe housing rule that we have to follow. Um, and then there's the, the Massachusetts lead law we have to follow. So we've, we, whatever the stricter path there is, we have to take, um, but we do an evaluation after we, the lead ins inspection happens, if there's a, if it's built before 78. So we go through the house, do an inspection, we do a write up, we put that the project out to bid to qualified contractors. And then um, there's, you know, there's contracts that are signed between the homeowners and contractors. We do the loan closing, send out notices to proceed, and we manage the project. And we do the inspections of the project, and then the money is is comes through. Actually, comes through the town first through town warrant. Then it goes to us, and then we pay out. You know, to, to contractors. Um, there is an admin fee that's um, of, that comes out of the grant of you know, for housing rehab program is twenty seven percent. I know that might sound like a lot of money, but it's a lot of a lot. There's a lot to it, and there's a lot of handholding. There's a lot of management of these projects and reporting that we have to do. Um, so um, it is something that we would we would we would ask for. So that's that's allowed allowed in the grant application. Um, but anyway, we see the project all the way through. We if there you know we act as a liaison. Any kind of disputes that happens, um, and we also make sure that all permits are are pulled for the project and that the municipal officials sign off on the projects before the final payments are made. We do, I get, I'll back up a little bit on the way the money works. We actually float the money. We, so we're, we work on a reimbursable basis. So we don't have to wait for it to come through town warrant so we can pay contractors you know, in a timely manner. Um, so, and then when it goes to town warrant, it, you know, comes, it goes to you, then you cut a check for what we've already fronted, you know, um, uh, to the contractors and any kind of admin uh, fees on that. So it's, it's nice in that, you know, there's, there are other programs that contractors are waiting six to eight weeks to get paid because it has to come through the state and the town and then it gets, you know, all that. So, so um, we've been successful in, you know, in running the program for many years, um, partly because I think we have a, a good, a really good staff and also we're able to pay contractors in a pretty timely manner. So. And when you say that, do you mean if the town was doing a project through the, like on public, in a public facility, if you're doing it at a private home, do those payments come through the town? The, the, so what we, we do draw to the state for the, for the town. So yes, that would come through like we, so let's say we're running the housing rehab program only, then it still would come through the town, town warrant, and then it would get on the warrant and then we would you typically We'll, you know, we we track when it goes in the comptroller's office, when it gets in there and it gets gets sent to you and wired to you and then goes on the board. So um yeah, we'll we'll have we'll have a bill for you basically <laughs> in any way screen. So but it'll never be more than what we've we've spent or and, and any of the admin we're gonna draw. And it'll, you know, if we draw too much admin, it's our problem at the beginning. You know, it's like we're we're gonna get paid what we get what we get paid through the for the duration of the grant. Okay. I have another question. Sure. So if we do the um, rehab part of it, is there any room for other potential projects within the grant or does it all have to be in one pot, one no, category? No, no, we, we do multiple projects in certain towns, you know, like okay. we'll do it like in Montague or Orange, which are bigger towns, we'll, we'll, you know, we're doing a sidewalk project in Montague right now and we have a housing rehab program going in Colso. Mm -hmm. so, doesn't have to be restricted to it. It's just that 
sometimes with smaller towns, it's not like there are, you don't have the infrastructure you know mm -hmm. in place that would be for an eligible project. You know, so. So, so one idea I thought of was mm -hmm. um, we're looking at having to replace the playground at the library, and it seems like that, that might be a it is the town playground. Yep, yep. I don't know. Um, so, do you have you? Where are you in the thought process? There is just just thinking about it, or is it like we're having to remove some equipment and then replace? Okay, but do you have an architect or anything? No. Okay. How much time do you have to like get that underway? Yeah, it's it's pretty tight to do uh -huh. it right now. We're doing we, so we we could do though, is if you're interested in this because this is what we did in Montague. So right now, so Montague has a there's a playground at a school, but it's considered a neighborhood playground, and it has to be. It can't, we can't do a school playground only, mm -hmm. because it, but it's considered a neighborhood playground. So what we did was we put in for design money in one year mm -hmm. and got. You know, we've got an architect under you know contract to do the design of it, and now this year we're going for the construction of it. So, so usually, you know, and it'll be a more competitive application if you if you have bid ready plans and specs basically for something like that. It's mm -hmm. you can do it all in one, but it just doesn't. It is in a, you might be sort of behind right now because a lot of the architects that we use at least are like they're they're trying to get together these projects that have been sort of in the works for a couple of years sometimes you know um but i can certainly look into that and what we would need is some is an architect to come and give us a give the town sort of a, a you know an estimate you, you know there has to be a few meetings about what you want to do there right. um and then it could be an estimate for what it would cost for the design of a new playground um and it was the, the one in, in um in Montague was it was only nine thousand dollars, you right. know. But now that's all ready to go. Like we put into an application, and then playground there is four hundred fifty thousand mm -hmm. um, dollars. But and that's so. I don't know. I can't. I don't. I can't picture your playground over there. Is is that probably not as big as the one that they're talking about in Montague? Mm -hmm. um, but they're not. They're not cheap. You know, there's right. a lot of a lot of stuff. That, it's it's different today with all the subsurface stuff. That you never see it costs mm -hmm. a lot of money, mm -hmm. only, you know. So, um, but I would certainly, you know, uh, I can I can reach out to uh, an architect if you're interested. I in guess it's idea. probably a discussion for our board, but yeah, it's and something like that. In general, um, if we do have other ideas that would be outside of the rehab, yeah, is it best to just like email you and, and see? Yeah. If any of those might be possible. Yeah, it is. I mean, I, I will, you know, usually we would do this over multiple years, you know, mm -hmm. and, 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 I, and to be perfectly honest, we weren't thinking about Wendell yet because we had just done one in 2019, but then it was like, we started building up with like, well, maybe we should consider a rehab program there because there's a, this this need, but we can talk about some other things in subsequent years and we might want to, right. want, want to you know, lay out, you know, for the next, the next five years or something. So that, okay. that, that might be nice to even have you come back to have a conversation about that in terms of looking at some possibilities. Yeah, yeah, maybe like in April or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, that sounds good. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, okay, that's I'll, I'll plan to do that because you know, there's I won't get into too many details, but there's been a disruption in the in the CDG program when COVID hit, and this year there's a they're doing a double round of funding um, because they didn't do one last year because they. The year before was delayed so this is a double round so you're eligible for more money this year um but it's it, we have to show that, it, that there's a need here for it so i can't say well give us all the money you know and then we'll spend it and then, you know you, you, you know they're they're looking for programs to be run over a course of two years and being done with it so there's like typically there's an 18 month <laughs> implementation period um everyone goes for extensions they all go to two years they can go to three years so DHCD, which is where the money originates, so they're, one, they're the ones who put the application into. They've made it clear, like, don't overshoot what you want, you know, because we're expecting you to be done with these in the two-year period. So we don't want, we're, they're trying to get away, you know, do away with with um, extending all of these grants multiple years, and then it's just a, mm -hmm. it's a mess for them because some some places have 2018 grants open still, you know, and it's like all this like which one we talk about. So. Anyway. Okay. 
Um, well, it so sounds like we have the need in terms of rehab. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. which is good. So do you need anything from us or is this mainly just this information? Is, you know, yeah, this is information. I'm sorry to interrupt, but um, <laughs> sorry, sorry. there'll be a public hearing sometime in January. We'll have to hold a public hearing. Um, right now, this is sort of a general overview um, of the of the CBT program. And I just wanted to put out there what, the, what we're seeing as a need in town. So I'd, I'd like to get the support of the board to sort of go forward with with doing a housing rehab um, grant application, looking into the, the eligibility of the, the meeting house um, project there, which might happen, and the, and whether or not town, we, I, if the town wants to give me the go ahead to look into getting um, an architect to look at maybe the playground and, and come up with some kind of cost for um, plants, uh, you know, for, for a new playground. So those those three things. I'm not saying they're all going to be included in the application, but if you if you can give me the go ahead to sort of run with those three, I you know that's what I'd, I'd like to have tonight. If I could. Um, I imagine we're all in on the rehab, mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. it's harder yeah. to see you. And <laughs> um, I don't know about the playground. It seems like mm -hmm. that's a little premature. I mean, you know better because it's sort of well, I think, I mean, in some ways, um, I mean, I think it might be good to consider the planning phase. I, you know, it's, it's definitely a conversation with more people, um, but it's the ability to have some support in terms of planning might be really good because we're not exactly sure mm -hmm, what's going to happen mm -hmm. with it. Yeah. And I mean, it's, really it might on. be something that we look at for other years, honestly, right. you know, or it could be something that, um, you know, if if you get an estimate on it, like of twelve thousand dollars for planning or for design work, um, you because you have a lot of money that's coming back to the town, you know, that you know, eventually, mm -hmm. you the, the agreement we have with you right now is that that money when it comes back. You normally goes into the housing rehab program, but it can be reallocated into a into a, a, a CDBG eligible project. There's a process for it, you know. So um, we might want to look at that sort of outside of like instead of like having to wait for the next round of funding. So you can't if mm -hmm. if, if Wendell gets funded this year, when next year comes around, they have to have a physical project in order to include some a planning project. You can't have a plan can't be a standalone. A standalone application, right. so it might be right. better if we sort of keep yeah. that in mind. Like, I'm willing so. to take that off the table and move ahead with the rehab, and we can continue the conversation yeah. either for future years or for. I think it might be a little. Some of the, I, do, yeah. I do think it, because there has to be, you know, we have to show that there's support in the yep. community, which you probably could do, but it's a little late on that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's a, I don't know if there's a committee, a playground <laughs> committee, or anything. Right, you know, so. right. No, we're not quite there. Yeah. So that's. I so mean, that's why I'm learn. feeling like it's, you know. Take yeah. it off the table. It's good to know what the process is. And yeah, no, that, yeah. I'm glad that's a great. Yeah. That's a great idea, actually. So um, let's we'll when I come back in the spring, we can talk about that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the meeting house, you know, it's fine. I mean, it's it's a little bit since it is the private, privately owned. It's a little outside of yeah the right. town. I'd say the priority would be the housing rehab. Okay. Okay. Great. In my, do you have an opinion, Dan? Uh, I'm all set with letting him go with all three for now and just uh, getting on board with all three. Uh, yeah. You know, because, uh, it, it, you know, the, the uh, part of it can be slow paced. That's fine. But getting him on board with all three at the very initial beginning, I don't think would be a bad idea. Yeah, it could, it could be that if you give me the go ahead on all three, then you know, the playground might be something that is done outside of this even or in another application, but at least you're giving me the go ahead to sort of start that process. I, mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to be ready for this application, but at least I'll, it'll be on my list right of, for, for, of Wendell possible. Yeah, that, that was my idea, just that it be okay. open yeah. for exploration. Yeah, that's a good idea. Actually. All right. That sounds okay. good so. to me. Sounds good to me. Yeah. All right. All right. Excellent. Thank well, you, thank Brian. you. Do you need right. a vote or anything? Or? Uh, you, 
if you want to vote, that would be great. I mean, I, I don't have to have, I don't have I guess to have that would vote, have to be at our, once nice we get into the vote. meeting. Right? Yeah, we have, we actually haven't called the meeting to order yet because this was an information right. okay. session. Okay. So let's do that first. We'll call the meeting to order, select board meeting at 7.06 and we do a roll call. So Laurie DiDonato is here. Gillian Bedine is here. Dan Keller is here. Okay. And we already started recording, so that's good. Oh, actually, right. uh, let me pause it and restart so that we have can have the meetings. Well, maybe we shouldn't since we're essentially this is part of the meeting. Okay. I, I was kind of thinking it was going to be informational session and then meeting, but it's right, kind of right, moving, right. so. Okay, so we want a motion. Can you give us an idea <laughs> of what? Uh, I guess a uh, motion to authorize Franklin County Housing Re Redevelopment Authority to pursue um, uh, or at least explore the idea of um, including, I'm not saying this right, this is not, scratch that. Um, <laughs> I don't know how, how to put it, the motion, how to put it. Um, to, uh, to authorize us to um, prepare an application for the, the FY 22, 23 community, community development block grant that's due in March. Um, and some of the projects that may be considered for that application are housing rehab program, senior, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, uh, um, public facility project at the, uh, the meeting house um, for ADA compliant um, bathrooms and um, design work for a playground at the library. Wonderful, I will so move. I'll second. second that. Okay, any other discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, great. Thank yeah, you, everybody. Set. Thank All you, right. Brian. Yeah, thanks, thanks for coming, Brian. Out. Nice job. Drive You're safely. Awesome. Yeah, <laughs> back down down there. Really slower. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll see you. All right. Night. Okay. So we just started our meeting. I can just say we have Martha Sen here too. And are you um? Introduce yourself. I'm Jason Ryder. Okay. And I'm here Jason for this Ryder. Job. That's what I figured. Thank you. Um, I'm not on the agenda, but I wanted to talk briefly about the dance stand and putting up. Okay. Well, we have a public comment section, so we'll get you on that. Okay. First, there's announcements, and the parking van reminder was under announcements. Did you do that, Glenn? Yeah, my understanding, Joy, and correct me if I'm wrong, but we have a kind of standing bylaw about parking. So you, I don't think you all need to vote on that. You sign a kind of a reminder every year, and that's in your box. But this is just an announcement reminder that um, there's a that there's a uh, no no parking on the streets, right? Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Maybe we post that somewhere, but maybe it's already, already posted. Yeah, you all mm -hmm. will sign tonight and I'll post the kind of the one with today today's date around. So it's it's just kind of a, a fresh reminder to people around town about parking. Yeah. All right, good. Thank you. Um Josh is trying to get attention. No, Josh. Is that year round or is that just for the winter? For the winter. The winter, okay. it's the seasonal. I mean, there's an overnight a overnight parking ban on the streets or something like that. Yeah. Okay, but like across, oh wait, across from the library are there spots? No, but next to the library. Hmm. Okay. We can send it to you, Josh, if you don't have it. Thank you. I'll... Okay, and I'll just warn people that this hybrid setup is making it much harder for me to see if you're raising your hand. <laughs> okay. Or Glenn or anybody else. Feel yeah, free I can play that role of monitoring uh, the okay. Zoom for who wants to Great. talk. Here. If people are able to, um, if you use your reactions button, which looks like a little smiley face, you click on that, and then there's a raise hand option, that will make it easier for me to see if you want to get attention. All right, excellent. Any other announcements? All right, we'll move on to the public comment. So I think Martha, you could jump in here. Okay. Um, well, usually every year 
I'm feeling up to it, I ask about decorating the bandstand mm -hmm. and on, you get to feel up to it. So I just want to make sure it's okay with the select board that I do that because I am using town electricity because I do plug into the lights into the box there. So I wanted to just let you guys know and see if you had any issues with it. Fine with me. Okay. No issues for me. Thank you, Martha. Yeah. Thanks, Martha. I think it'll be fun. <laughs> Thank you for doing that. It's nice to have some light in the very, very dark. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good time of year for it. Yeah. Yeah. So in the past, I've put out a um, a thing on the list of if people have lights or decorations or other stuff that they want. So I'll do that as well. But yeah, okay. I'll be doing that here by before the weekend. Holiday. The holiday. There. There is this weekend, right? Yeah. And I know there's caroling and stuff, so I'm trying to get it done okay. before that. Yeah. That's what I have. All right. Before it's Easy. too cold. <laughs> right. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. So next is select board updates and comments. I will say, I can't remember if I said this last time that I'm going to be traveling at the end of the month. I don't know if this oh, no. is the right time. And I actually will miss that meeting. At the end of the month, let me look. Oh, we have the twenty first. Um, I suppose if I really wanted to, I could call in. Although I will be on vacation, right? <laughs> so if if you don't need me, I guess I'd prefer not to have to call. Okay, I could. So Dan, I guess I would have to ask you to chair that meeting if you're okay. willing. Happy to do it, and I, I don't think you have to worry about having a good time. We can give you a <laughs> night off. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be gone that whole week. I can I'll email you the, the dates. Um, any other select board updates or comments? Um, I could just share. I started looking at chairs and things for replacing the folding chairs at the. Mm -hmm town hall um, and there's a lot of different choices. <laughs> um, so I, I think I still will try to probably by January, I won't make myself do it for the next meeting, but probably by January, um, come up with a proposal of how many chairs to purchase and carts and start from there. So if you wanna make a chunk. But yep. they're pretty expensive, and I don't know if that's just a, a sign of the times right now or if they're always that expensive. Thanks for doing that, Gillian. Take a look at that. I guess I can, I don't know if this is the right time, but I did get a call from Nancy Groton today saying that they're going to give their annual donation with Good Neighbors. Um, so that will be coming in soon. and. Um, it had gone to the kitchen a few times, but I don't know if that's necessary this time. So that might be, in the past, it's been $500, but mm -hmm. that might be another something that can go towards things like that. Anything else for select board comments? So just looking at the meeting and warrant schedule, um, it's, Pretty routine and the warrant and the meetings have aligned, so that's nice. Any other comments on that? Just a yeah. heads up that um, uh, because there's a holiday on the Monday, uh, January 2nd, the offices will be closed, so we'll have to have the um, agenda for the January 4th meeting posted by the Friday previous. Okay, and is that the week you're going to take the vacation? That's the week well? I'm going to take off, and the, you'll be away. Um, but I'll work with Dan and Gillian at the meeting on the uh, the twenty first to come up with the plan, and I'm sure we'll be able to figure it out. I can okay. do the posting. Great. Okay. It's on the list for the twenty first to talk to you about, so we'll get it all sorted out. And we have a warrant that's ready now to sign. Do we? Yes. Yes. I'll sign it tonight. Yeah, me too. I'll do it in the morning. And there's also a certificate to sign here as well, Dan, that will be with it. Okay, thanks. Okay. Okay. 
think we're doing good on time to do some reports from the project coordinator first. I think I see Phil is there. I am here. Hi, Phil. Good evening, all. Hello. Nice to see everyone in place there. I, next time I'll come to the meeting, it's much more enjoyable. That way. It is. Yeah, <laughs> be happy to have you. Oh, good. Nice to know. <laughs> so there's a, there's some things going on, and uh, it's yeah. kind of exciting that uh, I raised some concerns about the the uh, earmark for the land cap, landfill capping. Um, it seemed to have disappeared during the fall, but that has come through. Um, it's actually been signed. It's in place, and so now that means that we are free to. Um, to spend money to sign contracts to uh, get that project actually underway. So in that regard, um, I did have a meeting this week with uh, with DEP, with FERCOG, and with uh, Jan Amin um, at the Franklin County Waste Program, just to just sort of review the scope and talk about some of the parameters that we need to keep in mind. So that was pretty productive. And um, I've talked to, um, uh, Andrea Woods at FERCOG um, on in her capacity as a uh, procurement officer and have an arrangement with them that I've actually included a, a service agreement um, in the packet for you folks that you should have in front of you. Um, and that would be basically to, to oversee contracts and procurement for the various different um, uh, services that we have to engage for that landfill project. So that includes at the beginning that we have to get either an engineer or a, a consultant to oversee the placement and the management of the, um, the monitoring wells. Um, that we can do at any time, so we're ready to move on that. The only thing that's holding them up somewhat is all the, the vast numbers of trees and the terrain over there. There is a way to work around that, and I'm, I'm trying to engage um, Actually, Northern Tree is a company that the, the Franklin County folks have on contract, um, part of their service agreement contracts they do every year for, for multiple services that the town are able to, to, uh, to use in that avoids us having to go through any further procurement. But we'll get the, the trees can come, if the trees can come down, that opens us up to the next phase, which would then be looking at those, the slopes that are way too sleep, uh, way too steep um, so there's a lot of a lot of planning and a lot of details to work through, but I think we're, we've got a good understanding with DEP. Um, I'm 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 advocating and asking the board to support the idea of engaging FERCOG to manage our procurement and contracts for this process, this whole um, this whole project. Actually, um, they've offered to do all of that um, for a fee of nine hundred dollars. That's included in the uh, service agreement that you have there in front of you. Um, I can't tell you what a relief it is to have them involved. Um, it, not only procurement, which which isn't always necessary under various types of activities, but then you've got all the the wage rates to deal with, the paper, the contracting, um, the record keeping. Just there's a lot of details that uh, having someone that's expert in that on hand, <clears throat> I think it's <clears throat> excuse me, I think it's it's definitely a, a value to the town. So. For nine hundred dollars, that's the that's the cost of that service. It's a good deal. I think so. Yeah. 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 The other the other items are are a big question. Um, I know that I have an appointment with a surveyor for this Friday to walk the lines and kind of flag the property. We've talked about using the back of that property for a land a wood bank rather, and I'm also wondering if there's if the terrain is such that we might be able to borrow fill from the back side of that, um, I mean, you know, earth and gravel, in, but when I say fill, um, materials to fill in around the slopes of the, uh, the landfill, because that's going to be a horrendous cost. I mean, hundreds of truckloads of material will be required to, to fill in that slope. I'll have some figures soon, but at the first step is the survey. The second step is to try and get estimates on the quantity and then and then see what we have for options. If we have if we have some materials in town that we can use our own highway crew to deliver them to that site, um, 
like I say, I don't have the numbers yet, but it, it's a huge cost that we mm -hmm. will have to look at at some point. So it's uh, it's it's good. It's a it's a sort of a, a project no one wanted to look at, but I think we're um, I think we're on the way to uh, to seeing that underway here pretty quick. So that's that one for now. Um, the Kentfield Road Bridge is ready for final inspection. In fact, we're meeting there tomorrow at eight o'clock in the morning to do a walkthrough and to come up with a punch list for any details that still need to be attended to. Um, this is all very timely because our grant runs out December 31st. So this, this um, and all we need is invoices, you know, dated prior to that and we'll have them. So that's good. Yeah. So that project is going as totally according to schedule. Um, I don't, we haven't had any kind of overruns or any issues with that project other than it taking so long to get the bridge. Um, the, uh, you may have picked up on the fact that we had some washout <laughs> on, the, on the Mormon Hollow project after it was finished. And we had to get uh, the contractor back in there to, to uh, replace some of the, the loam that was placed on the embankment and use some stone and riprap um, in place of that. So we're gonna monitor that over the winter and hopefully that will be a sufficient fix. Um, we may have to do a little bit more in the spring. So that contract is gonna stay open um, with a small amount of uh, retainage until that time. Um, okay. We have a, I'm also gonna talk about, um, and then this will be next week, next meeting for you. We wanna talk about a similar contract with Franklin County, with FERCOG, on the procurement for the roof of the barn or the highway barn. Um, that'll be coming up, gonna go out bid again on that pretty soon and have that ready. So hopefully that's, the roof is gonna be all done by, I think the date that we've selected is probably is July 31st. And that will leave that building available for, um, if we're gonna do solar there, um, we're talking about some electric, uh, some battery installations, that kind of thing. Um, I could go on. Are there any specific issues or questions, um, any of the projects that you're aware of that you would uh, like to hear about? Bill, thank you for doing I can't all can't think of any. It's a heavy okay. load. Well, good. Yeah. We're, uh, we're moving along. Things are happening and uh, we're spending money. So. <laughs> That's good. Keep it up. Here we go. <laughs> thank you, thank Bill. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, you want to go next, Glenn? Sure. Um, let's see. I think most of the items I need to talk about are on the agenda, but one item is we are, uh, the select board will be honoring Wendell's new oldest citizen on Tuesday at 4 p.m. Um, her name is Dorothy, just one name, D-O-R-T-H-E-E. -E. And uh, we have a ceremonial cane and a pin, and uh, we'll have some light refreshments at the select board. <laughs> so join us. Um, and I have uh, picked back up. We haven't given up on having a fully formatted and, and beautiful annual report for 2021. And I've um, found that uh, I have, I'm in, done an in, inventory and have some, some things I need to fill in, but i um, hopeful that by the end of the year that, that I can get that off to the printer by the end of this calendar year. Um, and I think that's about all for me. Great, thank you. Yep. If, if I may, um, if this is Phil again, if I may, I forgot to ask you specifically for a vote for that for COG agreement. Um, you, We're gonna do that in our consent agenda. Oh, okay. I don't think so. I think the one in the consent agenda was from the open oh. space committee. Oh. I don't think I got fills until. Um, yeah, yesterday. Yeah. Well, in that case, I'll move that we approve the $900 for COG for doing this help. The landfill capping. Right. That's a service okay. agreement for the uh, for the landfill capping for contracting and and uh, procurement services. Right. Okay. I oh, can second that motion. 
Is there more, Glenn? I was just going to say, I don't think I printed that up for you to sign, so I can actually give you a link so that you could print it up if you wanted while you're there, if you want to sign it before you leave. So I'll get catch up with you after the meeting. Right. Uh, any more discussion on that for COG approval? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, thanks, Bill, for making sure we did that. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thanks very much. You step back, I realized there was one thing that I didn't mention in the select board report uh, was that um, I attended, I went to Boston yesterday and attended the ceremony for our. IT grant award through the oh, wow. community compact grant yes. um, of uh, $25,005, I believe it is. Um, but that is coming to us to help with our remote meetings and get us to some more work on our IT in town here at the library in the town hall. So um, it was short and brief, lots of goodbyes to the current administration happening at the ceremony. and. Um, but it was a good day to go into Boston. So nice. Thanks for doing it. Yeah, thank you for getting the grant. Yeah. yeah, totally. And Laurie, um, you represented Wendell at the uh yes. final the, mile, the last mile. Yep, that was fun. That was in Ashfield. Saw the governor and the lieutenant governor, and it was a lot of patting everyone on the back for yep, that was, job that was well was. done. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It was nice. Okay. Um, I keep wondering if we have time to do our consent agenda before we do the interview. <laughs> uh, um, maybe. So, should we try it? <laughs> I was going to say no. I was going to say Jason. No? All right. We'll wait. Um, yeah, he's been waiting. All right, Jason. Thanks for coming in. <laughs> thanks for having maybe. me. Hi, Jason. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Jason Ryder. Hi, we talked a bunch. Nice to nice to meet you. Which I look forward to meeting you in person sometime soon. Yeah, for sure. Likewise. Okay. You're a little all, a little bigger now, so that's good. All right. So yes, this is um, a very brief interview for the snow removal position. And actually, do you know who all of us are? Would you like us to just sort of? Uh, yeah, that'd be great. I, okay. don't, I, have, I have no idea. So. I'm Laura DiDonato, I'm chair of the select board. Gillian Bedine, select board member. Dan Keller, select board member. And I'm Glenn, I'm the town coordinator, and we posted the position, and uh, Jason applied. Um, he shared with us three references, all of which were glowing. One of your clients, Jason, said you saved her life. Uh, the other person <laughs> talks about how he refers you to everybody that he meets. So very, very positive uh, recommendations. Nice. That's Excellent. great. Yeah. So um, I guess you can just give us a little bit of your experience. Well, I've always lived in New England, so I've always done snow removal. Uh, I do snow removal for Martha all the time mm -hmm. for the past 10 years. and. Um, before I had my job with Spencer Peterman making wooden bowls. I also did snow removal there too. Um, I've had multiple landscape jobs where that was a big part of the year too. So mm -hmm. I've done it. <laughs> All right. And you have experience with the snowblower? Yep. And how to fix it or maybe do tune ups or whatever? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. All right. And where do you live, Jason? I live in Miller's Falls, but I'm always here in Wendell helping Martha take care of the farm and things like that. So cool. And also I have multiple clients in town that I do side work for. Mm -hmm. A couple Sounds of people good. a few times a day and mm -hmm. I mean a week. So yeah. I mean I know the town pretty well. Mm -hmm. Four -wheel drive vehicles get up the hill. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't think of anything else. So I mean. <laughs> but I do love it up here. Mm -hmm. I plan on this being my forever home, being as I'm with mm -hmm. Martha's daughter, and mm -hmm. we have a great big family together. So mm -hmm. I'm here to stay. Mm 
<laughs> There's no place else I'd rather be, honestly. Mm -hmm. I love the community and hope to be a part of it for a long time. Great. Good. And your schedule works in terms of sort of yep. being able to meet the snowstorms here and there and things yep. like that. Um, if ever my fiance is at work when there's a snowstorm, Martha said she'd watch her children for us while I take care of stuff up here. Great. Great. Yeah, and it could be in the mornings or in the evenings, depending on if their evening meetings, which honestly would be interesting to get a feel for how often there are evening meetings these days. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. can't remember in the past if if it was a given that if there was a storm where could be cleared in the evening it happened or if they check if if Tom would check whether or not there's going to be people here. Mm. I mean yeah there are people who work when it seems like wednesday nights mm -hmm. for sure and we're trying to have our meetings mm -hmm. right <laughs> so. yeah yeah but well, it's better to be safe than sorry anyway right yeah. you right. want it right i was figuring it would just be every storm mm -hmm. go and get it done so that even for safety reasons you know god mm -hmm. forbid something bad happens and the place catches on fire or something <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. Right. I no, that's that. true. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Of course, yeah. you guys tell me how it goes. So. Right. <laughs> well, I think even the ice sometimes is even the trickier part. Is right. Trying to figure out how to make it so we don't end up with ice or removing right. it before it becomes frozen mm -hmm. solid ice. Mm -hmm. so yeah. Seems like that's more of an issue these days. Yeah. 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 Sounds great. Climate's being silly these past <laughs> yeah. years, so yeah. yeah, more ice than snow. I see. <laughs> right. Great. I think that's. Yeah. I don't have any other Does questions. Anybody else have any questions, Dan? No, sounds good to me. Fun. Nope. All right. Well, I mean, I do. Oh, oh you yeah. have questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have any questions? Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, who would I be meeting with to be shown the jobs mm -hmm. and also where, you know, to find the snowblower and all that stuff. So. The snowblower is stored out in that, the garden shed. But any, I guess Glenn would probably be your main contact. And okay. maybe Eric, who is the custodian. Um, what do you, do you have more of an idea on that, Glenn? Yeah, I don't really know. I mean, I know the next step would be getting you connected with the treasurer who will get you kind of all your paperwork for getting hired. Um, and our, um, the person who was doing the job is available by phone. Um, so, and he may be available for a meeting with you also to kind of describe to you. He can't come in because of um, a, a recovery period that he's going through. So, um, uh, meaning physical recovery. So, he has all the information you have, you need. I have none of it. So <laughs> we'll figure it out. I'm used to, I'm used, to, people are very cooperative and I'm used to solving problems where I know nothing going into it. So we'll figure it out together. Perfect. <laughs> but you can connect him with Tom and that should yeah, be the, that'll the magic be the, link. That'll be the way right. it happens. Yeah. Tom Weatherby. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've done work with him this year too. I hope. Okay, you know, great. Yeah. Yeah, so he, he's stack all of his firewood and excellent. get him hay in the barn and stuff. So yeah, so he is the one who has the information. Perfect. Me and him get along great. <laughs> good. I actually worked with him at Rug and Leader Lumber at one point. Fabulous. So. Yeah, good. Make sure to charge us for all the hours you spend. You know, whatever time you spend with him getting getting oriented. So okay. Um. So yeah, I mean, I think you'll find I know I've done a lot of work with people up here so mm -hmm. yeah. just love the community so i mean Great. tight knit awesome mm -hmm. strong so mm -hmm. i'm looking forward to it good mm -hmm. yeah any other questions for us then i guess just give me a call when uh you need me to come up and figure it all out all right we want you to get so we wanted you to get started as soon as possible because the snow could come at any time so yeah you never know right <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So I guess that's a question is the you're ready to, you know, start the process of getting um, your paperwork in and stuff like soon. Yeah. Great. Okay. And the details on the job like um, mm -hmm. is this 
this just this building or no it's what this building in? in front of the town hall and the police station just anywhere that isn't plowed by a, you know a truck okay and the and library the right in the yeah. senior center so it's actually five buildings perfect mm -hmm. that's great and, and just you know sidewalks and entryways wherever it's not plowed wow. by a truck cool and uh i guess i do have another question is that i mean um I'm pretty excited about this, if you haven't noticed, <laughs> um, as maybe kind of a foot in the door and maybe like <laughs> maybe in the spring, if anything opens up with like the rest of the town mm -hmm. jobs or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. I think I think, yeah, I think you're smart if you're looking to try to do that, then, you know, <laughs> you'll be in the system, you'll be doing a good job and the guy some of the people around you who you would need to connect with will will get to you can build relationships with them so that's great yeah thank you great. thank you so much for having me and considering me great oh, i appreciate it very much great thanks for coming yeah and i'd cool. say just be in touch with glenn yeah glenn and give me a call when uh, you want me to meet with tom yep i will or should yeah. i um, I don't know. <laughs> well, I think what you should do is work with Carolyn first, get your paperwork in, be officially hired. So then whatever time you spend with Tom, you can bill us for. But you, you can't do that until you're kind of officially signed up as an employee here. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And Great. I'll Thank get you so your much. contact information from Glenn and um, we'll get you signed up. Perfect. I'm Carolyn, the so treasurer, much. by the way. Yeah, Carolyn. Carolyn she is. snuck in without us knowing. Carolyn, do you need us to take a vote? Yes, you do need to take a vote. And right. my understanding, unless something's changed, my understanding is that it's the position is $15 an hour with being paid a minimum of five hours per storm. Is that still correct? Um, I can look up what we advertise. Hold on just a second. I do remember the $75 minimum might feel. Uh, let's see here. I got it. It's $16.25 an hour now, minimum of uh, five hours. Yeah, it's all okay. Really, so I think it would be, I'll just um, copy it into the chat and it would be the select board voting to hire them on the terms as presented. Okay, perfect. All right, I'll make that motion to hire Jason Ryder for our snow removal position interview based on the terms presented. I'll second. So official. <laughs> uh, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And Dan raised his hand. Oh, Dan's muted, but Cynthia oh. Dan raised his hand. <laughs> I just said, looks like you got a job. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I appreciate thank you, Jason. you all very much. All right. Yeah. Have a good Thanks. evening. You as well. Thank you. Yeah. Great. All right. So we can go back to the consent agenda. Um, and uh, does anybody want to take anything out of the consent agenda? Okay, so I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Should I read out everything? Um, uh, I don't think you need to, no. All right, good. Second. Any other discussion on anything? Just that um, I would just ask, I guess, uh, you know, looking at the license renewals, liquor license renewals and stuff, Glenn, everything seems all set. Uh, yeah, the only issue is we are waiting for the um, fire department to be able to get in for the, um, for the inspection, they just didn't have availability as, as soon as uh, it was needed. So that's happening on Friday. Um, so I, I think it would make sense for you to approve and sign 
and I will send it in once that has come in. Okay. Glenn, are you talking about the liquor license renewal there? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay, anything else to discuss? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Well, the consent agenda Aye. is passed. Very efficient. Good job, friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, next is letters to Energy Facility Siting Board and the Borrego Corporation. So the planning board has requested that you all uh, send these advocacy letters and uh, there's copies of the proposed, I guess it'll be emails actually um, in, the, in the folder. And um, uh, there was a question of who the one would go to for the siting board, but we figured out it would be the director of the siting board and I have their contact info, so. All right, I, I read them, I think they look fine. I'd be happy to sign or send. Yep. Yep. Same okay. here. Do we need a vote, Glenn, or no? Just the sending the letters from us is a letter of support or a sign of support. Um, yeah, I think I think a vote would be good. When in okay. doubt, it is coming from you. So. <laughs> All right, uh, we can make a motion to approve or support sending letters from the planning or based on what the planning board has requested to the Energy Facilities Siting Board and Borrego Corporation. Second. Uh, any discussion? Um, I have a question. There were two letters. I thought there were alternatives, or do they plan to send both? I just need some clarification on that. And yeah, one, one is to the siting board, and one is to the corporation. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. They're both described in one email. So. Right. Okay. The question. All right, any other questions, discussion? All right, we can vote, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Excellent. Moving on to the dog noise complaint, which hopefully everybody read that email. Yeah. Um, I have Ray who loves to look things up, who actually found that a nuisance dog is the same as a dangerous dog in terms of how we can handle it. Oh. Um, so we could do some kind of a, a hearing or forum um, if this complainant would like to do that. Kind of thing. I, I know from talking, I mean, she made note that I talked with her before and we had um, Megan from the Leverett police talk with them and visit um, and that didn't, hasn't really seemed to resolve the issue. So it does seem like moving ahead with something like that might yes. be prudent. Um, so I can send, if everybody wants, you know, the, the pertinent laws and maybe um, if we all agree, which I guess uh, Glenn can contact Karen to see if that's something she would want to do and we could try to schedule something. So, and it would be a hearing and then what, what would the outcome of the hearing be? Well, the select board can issue all kinds of orders. Oh, okay. On the dog, depending on the circumstances. So I think the first step is the hearing. Okay. Right. Yeah, have you done anything like this before, Dan, with a barking oh, yeah. dog? <laughs> Bark, barking or dangerous, and you know, it's always in the newspapers. It was in the paper this morning with some select board. Uh, you yeah. call it a dangerous dog, and there's a lot of alternatives that the select board can, can authorize, depending on the severity of the situation. 
from your experience, do you feel like we're at that point where this would be worth bringing it to a hearing? If there's disagreement amongst uh, people about what the outcome should be, then it's time for a hearing, I think. Okay. Yeah, so I guess um, asking the complainant if she thinks she's done it, when it sounds like it based on the letter, right? Mm -hmm. That she's yep. already yep. tried her own, you know, to solve it on her own and she's asking for our help, so. Great, I'll reach out to her and make sure that that's what she would like and then we can move forward with figuring out how to get it scheduled and posted and whatever needs to happen. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Glenn. Sure. Okay, next is the Swift River furnace pump, which I did watch the recording of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I did attend the meeting last week of the New Salem Select Board and um, to hear about the issues of the furnace at the school. Um, it does sound like an emergency situation um, because if the furnace died, we could have frozen pipes um, and cause a lot more damage and a greater expense. Um, I did share the recording because I felt like there was a lot of technical information that I wouldn't be able to um, share well. Um, New Salem did vote to fund $10,000 uh, towards it. And I had expressed at the meeting that while I couldn't make a decision, um, you know, my general understanding is that we likely would be as supportive as well in terms of this is one of those situations that is sort of an emergency situation to um, take care of a facility that we're partially responsible for. And are they asking for 10,000 from Wendell as well? Is that the ask or? That's, that's the ask is my understanding is 10,000 from both. Um, and with fingers crossed that that covers all of the expense for the new pumps. Well, should we consult with our FinCom before we act? Um, I mean, there, there is money available. There's the uh, reserve fund and there's a select board account. Um, and the ARPA and funds. Probably ARPA money too. And ARPA money too. Right. So right. I kind of feel like we should make a vote tonight so that there's no question about that. And then yeah. um I mean it would be nice, I guess, to have an opinion from the finance committee in terms of which fund, but could we make a vote? And then we could always amend that vote at a later point if we decide we want to have it come from someplace else. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So do we think the ARPA money is the best thing to, to, to vote on or? I feel like it's there and usable and um, if we change our minds later, but I definitely would want to vote to say that it's coming from ARPA if so that there's a record right. of it. Right. Well, we could vote to say that it's coming from ARPA and uh, any other source that may be uh, desired. Per advice of the Finance Committee. Right. There you go. That leaves yeah. it open. Yep. But it, but it does guarantee the money, so. Right, any other advice, Glenn? No, I think that sounds great. So the, just to kind of consolidate and maybe for Cynthia's benefit, it's a motion to direct $10,000 of ARPA funds or any other funds um, deemed appropriate by the Finance Committee to uh, Swift River School um, Furnace um, Repair or Replacement. Yeah, good. That sounds good. So moved. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.
Okay, and they, that did just make me think that we, um, we sort of at one point we're hoping to connect better with the FinCom and find somebody who would be <laughs> to maybe take over Doug's role. And um, I think we may need to pick that up again. <laughs> I can't remember yeah. what where we were at. We had talked about having a um, money managers meeting. Yeah, and I don't know well, if that email got sent to FinCon. Well, before I started trying to organize the money managers, I was trying to organize the ARPA um, meeting, and they does because uh, we also talked about having a group to just to look at the ARPA SLFRF funds, and um, so the person who volunteered is on was on vacation, and, um, and so I just have it on my list. Hopefully, they're back now and can get a meeting scheduled with them. But um, yeah, um, I, I don't know if, I think that the finance committee often meets on Monday nights. Um, I'm often busy on Monday nights. I teach a class. So um, I don't know if there's someone who might volunteer just to keep an eye out for when the next finance committee meeting is and, and go <laughs> ask to be on the agenda or I'll send an email right now asking if they couldn't um, be in touch with us about a joint meeting. A joint meeting, okay. Or, or or even just one of us attending to schedule a meeting. Yeah. And about just, when their meetings are so that we can. <laughs> right. Does that like make sense? Could yeah. Could designate yeah. someone to go and yeah. meet with them at their meeting and just check in about, you know, a money manager's meeting, a finance director, all of that. Right, that sounds good. Okay. Thank you, Jillian. Um, I have a picky question about the Swift River School and it is picky. Um, I looked at the um, video of the meeting and it's the system, it's the pumps and the systems that go with it for the heating system. Uh, they didn't really say furnace. So that's it's being picky, but boiler. Yeah, it's a it, it's I think not well, it's not the boiler so much as the pumps the, and the motors that run the boiler. That's what right. I'm getting at. It's, You're right. <laughs> and, and so it saying furnace might just be a little too broad. Can I um, substitute um, the pump systems for the furnace in, in the motion? Yes. 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 That sounds great. Thank you, Cynthia. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Thanks for clarifying. I want to apologize. It's a gift to us. Thank you. All right. I think we can move on to the craft fair logistics. Yeah, um, so the craft fair is Friday night and Saturday. Um, and um, Eric has gone over and kind of stocked things up. He's ready to come and uh, clean clean our trash and recycling. I think he's planning to be there between the craft fair and the next morning when Good Neighbors is there. Um, so I think they're all set from that perspective. And then um, I know for the town meetings that we've had at the town hall, we wanted to try to get those lights to work um, in advance of the meeting. So I'm not sure exactly. Maybe I just should email Jim and ask him to turn those on at some point on Friday, or I don't know if you all know how to turn them on. Maybe you, it was just that it was doing it in the dark that was too difficult. Or... You're talking about the lights on the common? Yeah. Um, yeah, it should be fairly simple. I, I'd be willing to do it. Okay. Yeah, maybe go during the day before it gets dark or bring a flashlight or whatever. So what's the timing on that, Glenn? I think it starts at four on Friday. Is that right? Yes. So maybe sometime before four. Okay, I'll do it. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. And sure. the timer didn't work last time. So 
um, I'll just try to keep an eye on, if it's still on Saturday morning, I'll turn it off. <laughs> okay. And then turn, but then I'll need to turn, well, I don't know, how late are they going on Saturday? I don't remember. If they I don't think, them. I think they're in the morning. Just okay. Morning. All right. Are there any other logistics we need to think about? Hmm. Not that I can think of. Okay. They have the keys they need or the code or whatever. Um, yeah, the, so the code, the key that's in the, t they have done a changeover of the keys in the town hall. So the key that's in the lockbox now does not open the kitchen. Um, maybe I can, I know that um, the kitchen committee was having a, one of the kitchen keys put in there, but I don't know if that's just to get, get it to one particular person or if it's going to be there on an ongoing basis, but. Right, we're gonna have to figure that out. <laughs> Originally, that was the reason for the lockbox was so people could get to the kitchen. Okay, yeah. Um, do we to wanna give everybody access to the kitchen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, they um, the crafts fair, people said they didn't need the kitchen. I mean, okay. uh, Either way is probably fine, whether or not they can get into the kitchen or not, I think. Okay. So, but the kitchen committee will deal with, we'll figure out which key we want in there in the future. Yeah. Um, just, that the fire department is also seeing the need for the lockbox. So there may be some coordination. Oh, do they, they want a key that will open everything? I think they do, yeah. Right, see good neighbors might have an issue with that as well. I don't know if good neighbors want everybody who uses the town hall to have a key that opens. Everything, yeah. Everything, seems Maybe like the fire department. Boxes just... Over there, one for the fire department and one for um, for use of the kitchen and the, the hall. We'll have to keep problem solving on that, but um, that's, yeah. but for, um for friday okay that's all set all right should we go move on to community compact grant purchases yeah so thanks to gillian we won that grant and now um our and shot you know, then <laughs> we're spending uh, right okay we can give him some credit too <laughs> It was your initiative, um, but uh, so that means that the the kind of quote that we brought to you or that Gillian brought to us when she was applying for the grant now becomes something that we would like you to vote to actually spend off of that grant. And that quote. I, so just to actually, Glenn, I had some thoughts this week um, when I was thinking about it. Yeah, that I would like to review it with people and the plans sort of where we thought to have each thing to make sure it is really like the detailed things to make sure they really are the things that we want to have in place. Yeah, um, because the grant was put together pretty quickly and with a general sense of what we wanted to do. Um, but I don't want to purchase things if we decide that's not quite the right thing. I see. Yeah. So could we, um, I mean, this is a quote for the grant, yeah. um, but could we just take a little bit of a step back and make sure that it's definitely the right thing before we order all the equipment? You could, yeah. I mean, I don't, I think you could get the select board just to authorize you to, you know, spend a certain, up to a certain amount of the grant with Entree on um, computer equipment. And then 
this gives you all a picture of the types of things. Or you could say, uh, you know, go to meet with Entree and come back with a different quote and have the select board sign off on the exact things that you want. I, I always support the former that Gillian be given the authority to figure that out. Not to exceed this original quote of sixteen thousand five dollars and thirteen cents. Yeah, of course. <laughs> So what are we going to do with the extra? How much extra? <laughs> There's more than that in the grant, right? Well, that's okay. The extra money in the grant, the 25, so the other 10,000, and some of that is to pay um, uh, the Collins Center, who will be working with us, and the they will be working with us to do some web design work, or not web design, I shouldn't say web design, but uh, sort of assessment and uh, planning process for a new website oh, because we couldn't fund a website, but we could fund the planning process for it. Okay. Um, so That's some good. of the money is for that. Good. Um, yeah, I'm fine approving Gillian to to figure it all out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to do you want to say up to sixteen five just so that there's a little wiggle room there? Sixteen thousand five dollars. No, 16,500. <laughs> I was trying to give you a little more wiggle room in case it goes up a little bit. And... That is up to my partners here. That's right. That's, That's what I was suggesting to your partners. Yeah. Yes, I think that sounds good to me. Okay. Me too. Um, thank you. So is this a motion we need to make? I yeah. Assume? Yep. You got you um, got to. I'm making a motion to approve <laughs> um, Gillian to determine um, <laughs> how to spend sixteen thousand five hundred dollars of a community compact grant on various tech purchases. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Hi. Thank you. Okay. Topics not reasonably anticipated. I know we one. had one. Yeah. I had a quickie that since we were talking about lights recently, the light in this off, uh, parking lot in the back corner is out or not. It's not on right now. Okay. Uh, I feel like I remember, Dan, that it wasn't that long ago that we had that we had to go to a lot of effort to to put in to, to put in a new bulb or whatever we need to do. Yeah, they're not simple bulbs, unfortunately. Does it seem right that it would be out so quickly? I'm not sure it was that one that went out. Okay. I mean, we need some kind of lift to get up there and do it, right? Do yep. we have Matt Edwards do it? Um, that I don't remember. It's, it sounded like uh, that's a possibility. He does have a, a, a bucket truck. Um, I don't know if it's something to talk to Jim about or if, if Glenn could yeah, with it. Maybe Glenn, why don't you consult with Jim to just to see? Yeah, great. Yeah, con consulting with Jim would be a good first step. Yeah. Sure, will do. And one thought, I, I don't think it would necessarily be able to happen right away, but if it, if if there's a way to switch it to an LED, we might not have to change it so often. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know how uh, much expense and F, you know how easy that would be, but it might be worth mentioning that to Jim too. Okay, he might like that idea. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, is that all you have, Lori? Yeah, that was. That was it, I think. Uh, so the um, personnel policy calls for folks to ask your approval before they um, advertise for positions, even positions that have been approved in the past. So the library would like to start the process of hiring for the library assistant position. Um, and their uh, description and everything is in your folder. So I need a motion to approve the library to um, begin searching for our library assistant. So move. 
Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Easy. Anything else? I'm good. Anything else? Okay, so Gilly and I are probably going to be here signing things for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> and Glenn, yeah, remember to send that link. Unless, did you already get it? I don't know. I haven't yet. No, I'll, once we're done um, with the meeting and recording, I'll post it into the chat. I'll okay. start. I'm sorry, it was a link for Bill's. Was it Phil's grant oh. that we need to, or yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right. Well, I guess we can have a motion to adjourn. I'll so take a motion. I'll make a motion to it. Yeah. <laughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Adjourned at eight oh seven. Another quick meeting. Nice job, everybody. And I'm sorry I couldn't be there in person tonight. I I see you're having so much fun in person. <laughs> you uh, miss us now. <laughs> dying to get back there. Uh, I, I think it's a great, great idea. And I hope to see you next time. It is a little weird talking to people in the room and on the computer. <laughs> yeah, but the computer seems I, to be doing a really good job, the one that's in the in that building. Yeah, this it's little owl. The person who's talking, and it it seems to be pretty fluid. Good. Yeah, yeah. And it'll it'll even be a better setup with Gillian's grant because you'll be able to meet in that meeting room with a big screen, and it'll be easier to feel like the other people are in the room with you. So. Nothing like a big screen. Great. The 